It's a pirate's life for me. Savvy. Good morning and welcome back to another fabulous day of Pirates Unplugged. I'm Brooke and I'm Ava. Today is Wednesday, September 20th and we are on our community schedule. We have a few announcements so please listen up. Here are this week's AR Goal Readers. Congratulations to these nine students for earning at least 30 points for the semester. They are now in the drawing for one of three $25 gift cards. Today the Lady Pirates will play at Burns. Let's bring home another W. Go Pirates! Our next football game is against Causey Middle on September 21st. Also, girls 7 and 8 grade basketball trials will be on October 10th through 11th from 2.30 to 4.30. See Coach Cooper doing homeroom for details. For today's IB lesson, we will be talking about approaches to learning, also called ATLs. Approaches to learning are skills that help you learn how to learn. The first skill is self-management. Today's focus is on organization. This is learning how to manage time and tasks effectively. To be organized means you will make a plan to meet deadlines, prepare for assessments in advance instead of the night before, and use a planner of some sort to keep up with assignments. This skill is one way to learn. Does this appeal to your learning style? Figure out what works best for your success in, as an ATL and approach to learning. Now for a few school reminders. FCA will have their first meeting on Monday, September 25th in the band room from 2.30 to 3.30. There will be a guest speaker and music. FCA shirts can be ordered now to September 25th. Please see Miss B. Martin, Miss Cooper, or Miss Jones for a shirt order form. Shirts are $15 and can be worn the days we meet. Please have exact, exact change or check. All orders are due by September 25th at the meeting. Bullying t-shirts have been on sale since the 18th. The due date for the orders are Thursday, September, September 21st. That's tomorrow. No late orders will be accepted. The cost will be $5. These shirts can be worn as spirit shirts on Fridays. Teachers, this includes you too. Don't forget that homecoming takes place next week on the 28th. Here are our Here. homecoming events. Tuesday, September 26th is Crazy Sock Day. Wednesday, September 27th is Nerd Day. Thursday, September 28th is Homecoming Shirt Day, Pep Rally, Football Game, and Presentation of Homecoming Court during Halftime. Friday, September 29th is our Homecoming Dance at 2.30 to 5. There is a $5 admission concession stand and the dress is casual, think jeans. You can bring your clothes and change into them at the 2.30 bell. We will have an awesome DJ who is lit and will have you dancing the whole time. The Recycle Club will meet on Tuesday, September 19th from 2.30 to 3.30. Do you need service hours for NJHS? Stay for Recycle Club. Earn one hour for the day. You do not have to sign up or fill out a form. Just show up, sign in, and help. See Ms. Thompson when you come to PE if you have any questions. NJHS will start morning help sessions for 6th graders on Tuesday and Thursday. They will be held in Ms. B. Martin's room at A103 from 7 to 7.15. Students who are signed up for beginning band need to see Ms. Callum Moore and pick up a beginning band camp form. Forms must be returned by Thursday, September 21st. In library news, we have our first million word reader of the year. Way to go, Stan in 6th grade. Tryouts for Scholars Bowl will take place today from 2.45 to 4 o'clock in Ms. Vickers' room. If you have signed up for Scholar, Scholars Bowl, you must try out before you can make the team. Please make sure your ride is here by 4 o'clock. If you have any questions, please see Ms. Wells or Ms. Vickers. As you know, we are beginning our IB community project today, the first one in PPS history. We have a special guest here to introduce this very important honor. Please welcome our principal, Ms. Hartzog. Good morning, Pirates. I am so excited about today because this is the beginning of something we started um, two years ago. Um, and so this is our last step of this whole process. For our eighth graders, you've been here for two years and so you know 
um, that the IB program is something that we have waited to get to this last um, point in time. I'm sure you've heard the teachers and some of your friends talk about the community project and you're not quite sure what it's all about. So I am here to share a little information, but before I talk about the community project, let's have um, just a little recap of what has gone on the last couple of years. Our teachers have gone to various conferences to learn about the IB program. Over the last couple of years, you have been introduced to IB Learner Profiles, you've been uh, introduced to the ATLs, and so for our sixth graders, all of this is new for you. What is the IB Middle Years Program? It's designed to develop well-rounded students just like you who respond to challenges with hope and an open mind, confident in who you are, you make ethical decisions, join with others in celebrating our common human race. In the real world, you get to apply everything you've learned in the classroom. You can deal with complicated and unpredictable situations. As learners, we hope you're striving to become inquirers, knowledgeable, thinkers, communicators, your principles, open-minded, caring, risk takers, balanced, and reflective. And I hope in your mind you're thinking, those are the learner profile. The attributes will be used throughout the year with this community project. We want you to make connections between what you learn in school and the real world. All of this will help you in becoming global leaders. We want you to think globally. The things that are going on in the world, there are so many things for you to think about. You have the potential to be the world leaders and do what is right for people by engaging with the community to make it a better place. How are we going to do that with the community project, you might ask? I'm so glad you asked. We're going to focus on service as action. You can do something about it. So what are you going to do? How is this going to be done? You're going to work in a group of two to three students. Develop service learning together with a common interest. Your teachers will provide an interest inventory for you to complete. And this is what it looks like. Teachers, this was emailed to you by Ms. Woodbury, so check your email if you don't have it. Once the students complete the interest inventory, students, you'll have an opportunity to see what common interests you have with others in the classroom to form a group. It's something it can be something that's related to sports, social issues, digital media, culture, hurricanes, etc. There's so many things you can focus on to help a community. You will define your goal to address a need in the community. A need can be defined as a condition or a situation in which something is required or wanted. Some examples of goals or the needs can be just to raise awareness, hurricane preparedness, social justice, understanding middle schoolers, something that we try to do every day, the danger of social media, and it can go on and on. What we want and what it will require is for you to actively participate, to research, to inform others, you could create or innovate something, to change the behaviors, to advocate for something. Once you form your group and you begin working on your goal, you will need a process journal, a tablet, a notebook, or something to write all of your information in and to keep it together. Some of you may decide to use a di digital tool to keep your information. This is let me back up. Going back to the process journal or notebook, it's very similar to the logbook you use in science. Everything is kept in it or electronically throughout the entire process. 
you must keep up with your notes and make sure you have your notes every Wednesday. During the process, you will have an opportunity to, first of all, investigate. Define a goal to address a need within the community based on your personal interests, and that's going to be after you do the interest survey. Then you're going to plan, develop a proposal for action to serve the need in the community, record everything about your project in that notebook or digital tool. You're going to take action. Demonstrate the services action as a result of whatever the project you're working on. Use your thinking skills and communicate with your group. Everyone in your group has to agree on what you're going to do. And once all of that is done, you'll get a chance to reflect and evaluate the quality of that service. You'll have a chance to work with the learner profile, the global context, approaches to learning. And this morning, there was one that was mentioned uh, during the broadcast. So these are the things you should have already learned in your class. And if not, the teachers will be talking to you about all of that. The community project will be ongoing throughout this school year. And I know you're thinking, oh my gosh, more homework, another project. There is no homework involved. It will not, this project will not interfere with any other project because your group will only work on it during the community project period every Wednesday. Depending on what's going on, there may be some months where we meet maybe two or three times that month. Think of November, we've got the Thanksgiving holidays, or December, we're out for Christmas. So we'll work around those schedules. Our last session will be in April, and at that time, your group will present the project to your peers. Now, you're probably thinking, all right, my teacher is going to talk and lecture the whole time. Nope, that's not going to happen. Your teachers are facilitators. This is the time for you to take charge and your teacher is there to guide you and make sure you're going through the proper steps. Is there a grade, your notes, your journal, or whatever you use to document everything and your presentation in April will be your grade. Your work ethic within your group will count. Teachers will observe to see who's working, who's not, and what I want to hear from the teachers is that everybody worked within that group. This is not a time for one person to do all of the work. So you've got to participate to make sure your group is working on something that everybody is interested in learning about and something you want to do something about. This is an exciting time for our school. As I said, this is the last step in what we need to put in place in order to be authorized as an IB school. We have many traditions here, and for those who have had brothers or sisters come through, this is one tradition they did not have. So when they talk about something they did when they attended Phillips, you can say, well, we did that. We told the sixth graders to sit on the floor. In fact, eighth graders, you'll get to do that next week at the pep rally. So sixth graders, get ready. Be prepared to sit on the floor. That is one of our traditions. We have many traditions, but this is the first community project that we've implemented and you will have an opportunity to say, we were the first, we began that process. So, Think about there are so many needs that are in our communities. There are needs that are there waiting for our pirates to do something about it. I'm excited. I will be walking around today visiting, and I hope that everyone will take the interest survey, find out what your interests are, work within the students in your classroom, group yourselves, and then we're going to go for it. I know it's going to be great. 
Thank you and have a great day in our first community project session. Thanks.